Do you have something to say? Then you need to start a podcast today. Now, to do a podcast, what you're going to need is you're going to need a good hosting service. And the one I use and the one I recommend is Buzzsprout. Now, uh, Buzzsprout has a lot of features, but the, the best part about Buzzsprout is if you really just want to dip your toes in to starting a podcast, it's completely free. However, if you're really if you're willing to go all in and go full hog, go to uh, the bottom of my show notes here, use my link and start an account. So not only if you start an account using my link, not only will you have access to all of Buzzsprout's Buzzsprout's uh, features and everything like that, you will also receive a twenty dollar Amazon gift card as a special thank you for joining. Uh, after your what was it? Second month, you'll get it now. Like I said, it has a lot of things, uh, especially if you start an account using my link, you get indefinite hosting. So every episode that you put up is it's just there forever. They will keep it up for you. Uh, multiple platform support, so that means that Buzzsprout lets you link to uh, many, di- pretty much every podcasting platform, be it iTunes, Pandora, uh, TuneIn, and just a whole plethora of other ones. You obviously have to do the work yourself and submit, but, I mean, again, it's easy. It's just a click of a button and a little bit of downtime. Uh, let's see, what else do they have? Set, they have? They have a lot of choices for monetization, be it uh, affiliate programs, such as this one you're listening to right now actually, and also uh, many different, and links to different sponsors, and different sponsor services that you can join to, you know, try and get monetized that way, and the last, the big thing that they have is they also now offer uh, the Magic Mastering Service, which is, what that does is it automatically fixes the levels in your audio, so it'll kind of tune out, like, background buzzing noise, and if like one and if you have more than one person on your podcast, it'll try to uh, even out the volume between the two different people, especially if like one's louder than the other. It'll automatically do that. And then all you really have to do is choose your subscription level based on uh, how much content you think you're going to be putting out every month. You know, you can go be safe like I am and go high. Or, you know, you can go low, and if you go over the amount of time, it's just a little bit extra. Nothing big. Now, uh, unless you're a complete coding wizard, you know, uh, well, making the, making the content is, in a way, it's it's kind of, it's both the hard part and it's the easy part, because obviously you got to have something good to say. But, or, well, no, you don't really. <laughs> but, unless you're a coding genius... You know, actually uploading a podcast somewhere is a massive pain in the ass. And really it's, well, not, not even so much that. It's just like, you, how, how, do, how do I do it, right? I tried, whenever I first started this podcast, I tried submitting to iTunes. And you go to the submission page. It's literally just a blank page and a field that says, what's your RSS feed? I don't know what the fucking RSS feed is. Buzzsprout, however, takes all that uncertainty away. Like I said, you just go to all the different platforms you want. Once you have some your stuff uploaded and submitted, and just sit, just hit submit, and you just have to copy and paste your, or and it, it gives you an RSS feed. It makes it for you automatically, so you have that. You can copy and paste that whenever you need to submit anywhere, and yeah, Buzzsprout makes everything easy. Buzzsprout is. It is, I, I would say it's your, your number one resource for podcasting. So if you want to start your own podcast, go down to the show, go to the, the bottom of the show notes here, use my link, get your podcast up, get your, get, get your uh, Amazon gift card, and get your heart out there. Now, enjoy this show.
Alright guys, welcome to another episode of the uh, Poncho's Paint Booth. I almost forgot my own show, because i got a few shows now. But, uh, for this episode, we're going to the Adeptus Mechanicus range, and we're going to be working on the Catafron Destroyer. Uh, in this case, it's the Plasma Cannon variant. Uh, so basically what these guys are is they're, they're servitors, so they're basically machines uh, using organic parts of people to function. And these things are essentially just big old uh, rolling cannon, rolling guns. As you can see, they got these big treads on here. And of course a big old cannon and a smaller side gun, which is the flamer in this case. So, let's go ahead and see what we're working with. So, as you remember, these guys are actually going to follow a very similar color scheme to uh, the Imperial Knight that we did, or just the Knight Legs, actually, that we did in the very first episode. So, and also since then, I have switched to uh, dropper bottle paints, so it's going to be slightly different. But I have tested out this effect, and the end is going to be the same. So what we're going to do for now to start out with is we're going to hit some of the more uh, primary cosmetic portions with uh, hardened carapace, which is going to be our dark gray. And so what that's going to be is that's going to be, as you can see on the chest of this guy, he's got some armor plates as well as on the back. Uh, this um, front cowling, I believe it's called, is going to be this gray as well. Uh, let's see. There's a small there's a small housing over the body of the flamer, and also over the uh, the main uh, body of the plasma cannon. And then last, we got this uh, little plate on the back here that's also going to be gray. Uh, and then also this one, uh, separately on his own, he also has this plate over his exhaust vents that we're also going to do gray. So, and then uh, once I get this gray on, we are going to hit all those sections with null oil. Give it uh, all that nice juicy uh, recessed effect. So, let us go ahead and get started. Nice, uh, quick little touch. Now I know it's, uh, just because the colors on this are so dark, or it's gray at least, it's kind of hard to see. You, you can kind of see where it's, uh, different from just the regular black primer. 
especially right here on the uh, the housing. However, uh, once we, I will eventually go back onto this wall. First, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and let all this stuff dry off. But the next step I'm gonna do is to hit those areas with a uh, a lighter dry brush, a lighter gray, and that's gonna bring you know some of the color and detail back, and it's actually gonna make it match more closely to my previous scheme or the, with the night legs, for example. So, like I said, we're going to let these dry and we'll come back to it. Alright, so our uh, previous work is all dried off on this guy. So what we're going to do now, or these guys, I should say, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush over the gray parts with field gray. Uh, the barely visible gray parts, I should say. And then I will continue on. And we will start with uh, this paint, Corpse Pale, which is a skin tone. And what that's going to go over is there's a lot of, uh, you can see that this big torso here, there's a lot of exposed parts, namely... Uh, on the left side of their heads, kind of around the stomach area, and then just sort of going around the whole thing, or around the torso, mainly, yeah, mainly the stomach, and uh, kind of around the uh, the left left shoulder slash rotator cuff area. But first, we'll do the grace. Gray's done on these guys. Not a lot, not a lot on this, uh, on these models. But there is going to be, there's going to be a lot of metallic parts. So as you can already see, especially just on the treads. I mean, there's not a lot of biological parts over. But what there is, we're going to go ahead and do right now. Again, that's going to be done with the corpse pale color. And I don't think I've actually used this one yet, but. It does mean that I'm going to need a couple coats of this stuff. So. That was a little bit lighter than I've used before, I think. Let's see what this looks like real quick. Let's see, I guess I'll go with uh, the man's face here. That's a good spot. See, that's pretty bright. Uh, pretty bright flesh tone. However, I am eventually going to go over this with a wash and probably just dry brush back over with the same color. See, I think that looks about right. I mean, it's a little blown out with the um, the camera light. Let's, let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, it's about the same. So yeah, it's kind of bright and pale. But that does make more sense since this guy is... Well, he's not technically alive. So, it should kind of look like old skin. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and go over all of these.
All right, so we've hit some of the uh, some of the more esoteric or smaller details with the kind of like the red base paints. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the start hitting the larger metallic sections, which there's a lot of in these models as you can tell, especially just all the all the workings inside the tracks here and all on the outside actually and then of course these guns and such and the first color that we're going to use is our bright bronze and this is going to th th this actually uh, mimics the Sycorax bronze that we used in the first episode on the night legs which is what I'm using now is this stuff and well, I'm not even going to try and explain exactly where all this is going, so I'm just going to let you guys sit back and see for yourselves. So, let's get to it. That is the, what was this color again? Bright bronze applied. As you can see, there's quite a few sections that we had to apply it to. And the nice thing about this paint is it's, uh, it's mixed, right? So it doesn't really need more than one coat. Now before, before I wrap this clip up, I'm going to, there's one other small detail that I want to, or, Actually, there's a couple small details that I want to hit. So you'll notice that there's, uh, on their torso, on the left side of their body, there's a leather strap there that I'm going to hit real quick. And then also on these hand flamers, there's a, uh, I got the fuel tank underneath, so we're going to hit that real quick too. The strap's going to be our Army Painter Leather Brown. And for the fuel tank, we're going to go with our Vallejo Terracotta color. So, first, let's see, stretch real quick with actual paint, not just some juice. There we go. Just a little touch. Get this out of the way. It's just going to be a little bit right along here. Some of the other AdMac models have more uh, have more uh, leather bits that need to be treated, but not so much these guys. That's one and two. And three. And 
and we'll switch over to the red real quick. And the fuel tanks. I'm not a big fan of the way that the uh, the arm is so close to the body, but I didn't actually build these guys, so that blame lies to someone else. So I actually got these guys in a, a trade sort of deal, so that's one little fuel tank there. Move on to number two. Okay, that's number two. <clears throat> Just about. And number three. Okay, so we have uh, some of the big metallics done. And we also have some of the uh, the red base details in, or all the red base details in. Actually, so now what we're going to do is try and finish up these metallics. So, the first thing we're going to do, and we'll see how long this takes first before I mention the next step, is we're going to apply our uh, uh, gunmetal color, which is kind of like a, it's like a darker version of silver. And... Much like we did with the, uh, the brass, I'm going to try and point out exactly where. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and get some prepared. And, ooh. I got some paint dried on the end of my this fucking thing. There we go. As I was saying, we will maybe... Maybe, we will maybe unclog this thing. Here we go. A little bit of science for you guys. There we go. Don't want to waste any paint, so... Get some of that off of there. Wipe this guy off. Alright, let's get some paint out. As I was saying, get some prepared and get going.
so that I, I think that was the longest uh, section that I've done on this channel so far. Yeah, we just clocked in an hour. Well, I mean, for you guys, stuff is going to be a lot less. But so that was all the work, uh, the metallic work with the gunmetal. And I am going to hit the brakes for, for now. Alright, so we're almost done with the, uh, sorry about the adjustments. We're almost done with the metallic elements of these guys. All that's left now is the one color that I could not replicate with the dropper bottles is Screaming Bell. That is more of our uh, reddish brass color. And once again, as you kind of remember from the night legs, that's going to be the, uh, the remaining trim details that are kind of all over this thing. Uh, and there's too much to even really try to point out. It's just all over, so I am going to go ahead and just get started. done with the metallics on these guys and like I said before it's quite a bit and actually now that I say that I see oh, I might have to revisit uh, some things along here like these little canisters off the side of the plasma gun plasma cannon sorry close these fucking things that's one reason why I don't normally like these anymore uh, so now, I just want to get one more thing in. Figure this is a good chance to get a head start on the bases. Which, I don't believe I've shown you uh, my style for mechanic and bases yet. But to start off with, it's going to be a uh, coat of leather brown. Alright, so now we got some of the, uh, a little bit of the base done, and, oh, where does this go, here we go. So you'll notice I, I didn't really do, like, an even coat of the brown 
on the base, and that's because it doesn't really need to be. It doesn't need to be perfect because I'm actually gonna. I'm eventually gonna have uh, some extra effects on here. The these Mechanicus guys actually use the uh, the cracked earth paints for the bait. Well, they don't use it. I use it on them. And, well, you're going to see what that is a little bit later. But for now, I just wanted to get the brown on. And, yeah, just kind of get a head start on that. Alright, guys, so now it's time to really ratchet up the details on these guys. So we've got all the metallics done. And then also other... Uh, you know, reddish based paints. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cover, or rather slather, all of that with our handy dandy Agrax or shade. And that's going to give us all the weathering and the recess details and just all that good stuff. Now, again, as with everything in this model, it's a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it and let you guys watch and enjoy. Alrighty, so that's all our earth shade on. You can kind of already see what's happening. There's a lot more uh, extra details in these guys. A lot of uh, like extra weathering and dulling effects. It just makes it more realistic and more better, I guess you could say. So. What we're going to do is we're going to let that dry off for a while and then continue to the next part. Alright, we are coming along pretty good here. We're almost done with these guys. At least the models anyway. I still got to do all the base and everything. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is a couple different things. First, I am going to get into starting on the uh, the plasma coils on these plasma cannons so what that is going to be is that's going to be this big uh, ridgy coil type thing on top and then all of these uh, tubes kind of along the sides of vacuum tube looking things and I think some of these models also have well 
yeah, this one's got another spot that that uh, would work on. So what I'm going to do is, oh, uh, the base of that is going to be white. And we're using our dragon white for that. And so, you know, that's going to take a couple coats. And I'm going to get it all nice and white and get to get it later, ready for later. Second thing that we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be applying field gray. And what that's going to go on is these big ass treads, finally, the tank treads. And then, well, you can't see it as well from here, but there's a bunch of, uh, there's both tubes and wires all over as part of the model. And this is going to be on the tubes. And those are made out by kind of, they're like smaller ridged, uh, well, tubes basically. And then once that's done, I'm going to hit the gray parts with our good old Nuln Oil shade to give it a nice bit of texture. So, but first, I'm going to start with the white. It's probably going to take me a couple coats, so I'm just going to go, well, I'll go through with the white and then we'll see how that looks. It's done. Uh, I think that's a good, pretty good coat. That's pretty much what we need for later. And so now, let's go ahead and hit these treads. Alright, uh, quick little pause. Uh, you can tell that I haven't actually done, I haven't fully done this skin yet, skin, scheme yet with, uh, dropper bottle paint. So that field gray was actually not bright enough what I wanted. So what we're actually going to do, we're actually going to use ash gray instead. That's a, a much lighter gray, and it'll give us the color that we want, or at least that I want.
right, well, they were a pain in the ass, but got the treads done, finally. And also, a little bit of the, uh, whew. sorry, it's late in the night, a little bit of the piping done all around this guy. These guys, actually. So now, before, while we're letting that dry, I think, what I want to do now is, real quick, let's get some detail, or, yeah, let's get some blue into the, uh, the plasma bits, and to do that, I'm going to hit it with, uh, what is this called, Drakenoff Nightshade, once it comes in there, there it is. So that is our blue wash. Let's see what that looks like. So this is kind of a dark blue, it goes over. Goes over all this stuff. And of course it'll fill in kind of the recesses and you'll have a little bit more white coming through around uh, the more pronounced edges. And then what I'm actually going to do later once this dries is I'll go back and dry brush over with white again so it'll give us a nice uh, really bright uh, glowing effect on this stuff. But for now, we'll just go with a uh, the bluish tint. Move on to number two. Get some blue on this guy. these guys and of course up here and last but not least number three Almost done. Right there. And one, two, three. There we are. So what we're gonna do now is we'll go ahead and let the uh, the blue and the black dry out and then we'll get into even more parts of this all right we are getting into the smaller details with these guys now uh, so what I'm gonna do next is first I will use the actually first First, as you can see on, you can kind of see on these guys, they have uh, some eye lenses on their face, uh, particularly on the uh, the right side of their heads, which is all mechanized. And for that, we are going to use our sick green color and fill those in. And then I might actually, where are you? And then I will also go over them with uh, this guy, the Art Code Paint. 
which is uh this isn't actually a color but what it does is it uh it puts a gloss over whatever you paint over so we're going to do that both of those with the eye lenses and then after that i real quick go back in with the dragon white and uh brush over the plasma coils and tubes on these guys so that'll give it like that nice white uh glowing effect so let's go ahead and do that But this next part, not so much. So now, what I'm going to do is, it's time to finally address all these uh, wires and stuff that are all over the model. So, And to do that, you might remember kind of this process that we did with the night legs. The idea is to alternate between red and blue with this scheme so what we're going to do is that's going to be half these wires are going to be pure red army painter again and the other half are going to be electric blue which is our Vallejo color and I will you know yeah I'm going to go ahead and get started and let's just see how that looks <laughs> So that actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think I have uh, some bad memories from the first time I tried to paint one of these guys. But so yeah, that's quite literally the actual uh, the model itself is completely done. So now we just have the bases to do, which I'm gonna clean up real quick, and I'll come back and get started on that. So now we are going to really get started on the bases and well Actually, technically I already got a head start on the bases like I did earlier. You guys saw that But now we're getting into the real details And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply uh, Citadel's Agrell and Earth texture paint 
Now what this does is this is a um, it cracks as it dries and you know kind of separates and you know leaves a nice effect which is why I put or yeah the main reason why I put in the uh, uh, the layer of brown the leather brown underneath and then also what you want to do with this paint is to really get well it depends on how thick you put the paint on so the thicker the layer the bigger the cracks are going to be whereas if it's smaller it's of course going to be less cracks and we want to have a good range of texture on this thing and being so like this right here is just going to be like very small uh, and like a lot of spiderweb cracks whereas a thicker glob like this even spread out it's going to have bigger cracks and I also only want to do well I, I want to do most of the base with this stuff is the idea and then leave some other parts uh, open for now because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it kinda be like a um, a toxic runoff effect so there's gonna be some green shit on these bases as well but that comes much later so for now it's just gonna be globbing bunch of this paint on maybe a little bit more here I can already tell I'm gonna be needing more of this stuff pretty soon which you will see because I do have some other Mechanicus related projects coming down the pipe much later though. Now let's see, let's get some here. Alright, that's good for that one. And also this stuff takes uh quite a while to dry. So I mean especially in this case since I'm putting it on so thick. So for you guys, of course, it'll be, you know, just a matter of moments, but this I usually end up leaving for about a day before I continue working with it. chunk on here and here and up front Two done, and number three. The one thing I will say about uh, this type of paint is I, I wish there was more. Uh, colors really so there's only just this uh as brown and then like a reddish color that's currently available and i'm sure i know you can get other 
I, I think you can get other uh, crackle paints somewhere else, but I'm not really sure where. And quite honestly, there aren't, at least I don't really need a lot of different uh, types. I mean, I guess it would be nice if there was like a light blue version for like ice or something like that, but it's not really a big deal. Let's get one more little glob right up here. Okay. So that should do the trick for these guys. And they are basically going to be sitting here for a full day drying off. So, <clears throat> But as I explained for you guys, it'll only be just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we let these uh, the bases on these guys dry up overnight, and check that out. That's a nice busted up earth look. And as you can see, the parts that were had uh, more heavier, more layered on paint are a lot thicker, or they're, they're bigger cracks. And then as we kind of go to the parts that were on a little bit thinner, they're thinner cracks. And, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can also see inside of the, uh, the cracks, the brown layer that I put underneath is also showing through. And, well, that's the idea of why we put that there. So, now, what we're going to do is another process that, unfortunately, is going to take a while to dry off. But our next task is to add some even more detail, so that is going to be done with Agrax Earthshade again. Our handy dandy tool, or liquid talent as some people call it, and we're basically just going to put it all over the base. So let's go ahead and do that. Cool. So, we're almost, we're so close. We're almost there. But, as always, I'm going to let this dry. And then there's just one more small detail to add, but I'll share that in a minute. All right, everyone. This is it. Time to finally finish off these Catafron destroyers once and for all. So all that's left now is to add one last detail to these bases, and that is going to be in the form of Nurgle's Rot. And so what we're going to do with this is all these areas that don't really have uh, this cracked earth, uh, I was going to say motif, but detail, we are going to basically just slather a bunch of this color on. And the idea is that it's going to make it look like toxic sludge kind of all over the place. And then, as always, in order to finish off, we're going to go ahead and clean up the edge of the bases with our good old matte black. And that's... This is actually spelled wrong, I just realized. There should be an E on the end. Instead, it's just like some guy named Matt who's black, I guess. But anyways, let's go ahead and get working on the sludge.
that's it. Uh, I'm actually just going to wait and do the edging. The edging. Uh, the edge cleanup after off camera because uh, this is actually still pretty wet. But as you can see, oh, without dropping everything, that is the Adeptus Mechanicus Catafron Destroyer. Oh, shit. Catafron Destroyer with the Plasma Cannon variant. Da 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 da. There we go. You can see its face and all. God damn it. Alright, I'll shut up. So, yeah. Pretty cool. We got these three done. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you like this show, you should like and subscribe to this channel on YouTube, which not only has uh, the Poncho's Paint Booth, which is this show, I also have a, another playlist for my podcast, Jankity Ass Podcast, which is also available uh, anywhere you can, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. And we also have the uh, Gutsy Ass Gamer playlist on this channel as well. That's where I play different video games through Twitch, and then I put the highlights and just kind of edit everything and put it on here for you guys to look at. So, I was going to say, and also subscribe to my, or follow my page on Instagram, which is also Multimerty Media, just like this channel, and also on Facebook, which is also Multimerty Media. So, yeah, if you like this, go back and like, uh, go back and watch some of my previous videos, and subscribe and stay tuned for new videos. And yeah, once again, you know I thank you. The boys here thank you. I'll see you next time.